We had a question come through the Linux Academy community the other day, and I just wanted to quickly create a video that explains how to find stuff in the AWS documentation, right? The AWS document documentation is huge, so how can you find the right information? More specifically, if you've got a CloudFormation template and you wanna know how to change a resource type's resources, or properties, I should say, how do you know where to find which properties you can change or which ones you can set, which ones you have to set, that sort of thing. So the question was specific to the this template right here, which is in the AWS DevOps Pro certification course that we have on linuxacademy.com. And so they had this file and they wanted to be able to change the name of the load balancer that is created through this resource block right here. So how do you know, first of all, that you have access to these properties listed right here? And how do you know which properties in addition to this you could set such as the load balancer name? So here you see we have nothing that sets the name itself. So how do you know that you can do that and how do you do it? Great question. Let's pull up our browser. Just pick a browser of your choice. And then instead of going directly to the cloud from it, to the uh, CloudFormation documentation, what I'm going to do is I'm going to look at this resource type right here. So this says AWS colon colon elastic load balancing colon colon load balancer. And I'm going to copy this, pull up my browser and paste this in Google or your favorite search engine. You'll notice the first result is already purple because I've already clicked on it. Now, you'll also notice that there's another one right below it. There's AWS Elastic Load Balancing V2 Load Balancer. This is the application load balancer versus this is the classic load balancer, which used to be the only load balancer available. But now we have classic versus application load balancer. I'm not gonna talk about the differences here. I just wanted to point that out. So then I can click on this and you'll notice that it takes us to the AWS CloudFormation documentation on Amazon Web Services website. Now from here is where you can find out all that information as it relates to the Elastic Load Balancer and its properties. We've got multiple topics. We've got the syntax, properties, return values, and examples. This is almost all you need to know about this resource right here, the Elastic Load Balancing resource. So first, if you look at the syntax, you'll see all of the available properties as well as the JSON and YAML syntax that you can use for this resource block in your CloudFormation templates. But this is very helpful even outside of just knowing the syntax because it lists out all the different properties in a very concise and easy manner to find. It also shows you what is supported. So here, for example, availability zones, which we had right here, we can see that we can pass in an array of values, and we know that because of the way they've laid this out. Here you can know that you can uh, pass in a Boolean, here you pass in a health check, and so on and so forth. But what we're really interested in, because the student asked, was how do you change the load balancer name? So I notice here that there's a load balancer name property, so let me click on it, and it takes me to this list of definitions about this properties and what's available, whether it's required, the type, that it accepts and that kind of thing. So if we read this, it says a name for the load balancer, bam, there's the answer right there. This is the property the student needs. However, we need to know more sometimes. For example, which are the valid values that we can use for this property? To do that, we can see the load balancer name property for the create load balancer action in this right here. So we can click on this, open up another tab, and we can look at the request parameters and uh, if you look hard enough, you can see all kinds of different API information. That's a lot of information. I'm not gonna go through it right now, but know that that's an option. And then it says, if you don't specify a name, CloudFormation will automatically generate one using the physical ID. So the name must be unique within your set of load balancers. That's why it uses the physical ID because that makes it unique. You know you're not gonna have any other IDs that match this, so you won't have any conflicts. You can also look at the name type then you can look at the important information that says if you specify a name, you cannot perform updates that require replacement of this resource. And you've got more information here. It says this is not a required property, which is why you didn't see it in this CloudFormation template that we just looked at. This has to be a string. It cannot be anything else. And if you try to update this property, it will have to replace the entire load balancer. It can't just do an in-place update. It will have to create a brand new resource. So that is something to keep in mind. We can also scroll down and look at the return values for this property, or I'm sorry, for this resource. So we can uh, use ref to get this information here. We can use the get attribute intrinsic function to get this information right here and so on and so forth.
And if we're stuck, we don't know how to use it properly, despite all that information up there, we can also grab some examples. This is also a good way to get started. So if I'm just creating a brand new CloudFormation template, I don't wanna to have to manually type everything and have typos. I can just copy this and then I can take out the stuff I don't need or add additional properties. That about wraps it up for this quick little tutorial. I hope this helped you out. Please let me know in the comments if you'd like to see more videos like this. I'll be glad to oblige. Thank you so much for watching.